Welcome to Low Town. I'm Nate, and I'm going to show you how to use the double high pieces in our city builder system. Let's dive in. First, let's look at all the pieces that are mainly used for double high building. We have the rustic wood double high solid wall. Uh, so this has the same footprint as a regular height wall. However, it's what we call double high, which means it's the height of two walls plus a floor. So if you have uh, two, two buildings with floor, regular wall, floor, regular wall, you get a floor, double high wall coming up to the same height. So double high is that, that odd height of two walls plus a floor to account for this floor in the middle. The uh, double high wall has different pattern on either side and uh, it is magnetic. So all the walls are magnetic, so you could pop on picture frame or any other magnetic accessory there to accessorize your big grand double high walls. We have the rustic wood double high double door wall. Uh, so this one, same, same dimensions as the solid wall, but it has a port here for a pair of our double doors. Uh, so these double doors uh, will be hinged and interchangeable with any of our other double doors uh, that we've made previously from the Dungeon of Doom onward. So you can pop these into your dungeon, pop your dungeon doors in here, and the like. So you have lots of door options for this wall. We have the double high corner post, and this one has the nice decorative rosettes. Uh, so this functions just like any of our regular corner posts. Uh, except it is the same double high height. Uh, also, it'll have a facade holes up here for attaching facades, as well as facade holes here where a regular wall would hit. So you have two options of where you want to place facades on these. Then we have uh, the full-size rustic wood spacer. So this is if you want to interchange regular height walls with your double high walls in double high builds, uh, you pop this in to uh, take up the space that would be left by a floor. We'll show you how to use that in a moment. Uh, and this will have a pair of biscuit holes running all the way through it. They'll be centered on the two inches in a, uh, in a build when they're on a full floor. Uh, so that'll let you attach any of our biscuit hole fillers, like you could pop that into the, like that such, or uh, like the elven boughs on there if you wanted to run those for the middle of the building, uh, as well as attached floors and like. So we'll show you how that used in a moment. Uh, and then we have the half spacer. Uh, so this is the length, and if you cut that spacer in half, uh, it will not have the biscuit holes in it. And if you take two of them, put them together, they are the same size as a spacer, uh, which is also the same size as a wall with footprint. Then we have the exact same thing in Fieldstone. So we have the Fieldstone double high solid wall, and that is also magnetic. It has these sort of enlarged stones in the middle. Here's a nice spot you could uh, place a magnetic accessory. We have the double high double door walls. Same thing, the doors will be hinged and swappable in the final with any of our other double doors. Double high corner post. In Fieldstone, same thing, it'll have uh, facade holes on the top and at uh, first wall height. We'll have the full-size spacer, and this will have biscuit holes all the way through. The slots will go all the way through, just like on the wood one. And the half spacer in Fieldstone, uh, just like the wood. And two of these back-to-back -back are the same size as a spacer. All right, now... Let's look at how we build with these pieces. So building with our double high walls and posts is just like building with regular high walls and posts. We take any of the floors, we pop some corner posts in there, and then you slot a wall in. Uh, sometimes you'll find that the double high posts splay out a little bit, like these ones are here. So you can use our facades to help tie everything together. So there'll be a pegs here holding this together, and these will help hold the, uh, hold the posts from splaying at the top, as well as uh, making the outsides of your building more interesting. Uh, so here we're using the uh, wooden corbel row. Uh, this side, uh, we're taking advantage of uh, the double post holes, right? So we have 
we have facade holes here and we have facade holes here. So we have the full ivy facade across the top and then we have the, um, the post facade down in the bottom to make one continuous run. Uh, you could also do a double run if you wanted to. So you could take using the, uh, the lower holes, you could put something like this on there. You have to bear with it. We don't actually have the pegs in these yet. We have to use white stick for now, but when they're tooled and finished, they will have little peg holes in them and pegs in there. And then you could put the corbel run, uh, across the top, something like that. So you have like a double reinforced wall using double uh, facades. So lots of, lots of possibilities with it two pairs of facade holes there and ways to decorate up your walls. If you want to have more character, more personality to your walls, if you're tired of only having solid magnetic and uh, double door walls, you can bring in the spacer. So the full spacer and a half spacers lets you mix in your regular size walls with the double high post. So you can use any wall, you slot in a, uh, a spacer, and then you can put any flavor wall on top. Uh, it's also important to note you can put the spacer anywhere you want. It can go on the top and go on the bottom, go in between. Uh, and this lets you swap out. Let's say you wanted to put a door on the first floor. You can put a door on the first floor and then maybe a uh, torch up above. Uh, so it lets you kind of give some personality to uh, your walls and get really custom but being able to mix and match two regular high walls. Also, the uh, the spacers have uh, they have the biscuit holes in them, so you could put uh, you could put any of the biscuit hole fillers. So, like, let's say this was a black, blacksmith shop or something, you could put a little sign out there. That you could put the uh, with the elven boughs across. These probably won't fit because of our door and our lantern. But you could put elven boughs across something like that, or gargoyle looks really neat. You could put a pair of those over something and the like. Uh, on the interior, the same trick was from Being able to use these two walls gives us some fun options on the interior, right? Not just being able, so you could put a, uh, if this was the main door in, you could have a lantern above it, but you could also put a, uh, door up on the second story. So if you wanted, you could have this door up here like this, and this could lead to a second story area off, uh, off this main large room. Uh, you could biscuit. So imagine you've got a biscuit hole here. You could pop this uh, corner railing platform into those biscuits and build the stairs up. We do not have uh, the biscuit holes tool in this, so you're gonna have to use your imagination there. You can do something like that, uh, or you can biscuit the 25 millimeter stairs right in and do a straight run like that. Uh, you could also put an interior balcony if you want. You could biscuit that right in like such. If you wanted an uh, alternate interior balcony, uh, you could also put this balcony. You could put this balcony on the exterior, just getting out there, and then have the stairs running up to it. Keep them out there. Uh, you could also, while you're out there, you could take uh, the scaffolding platforms and biscuit that to the side, like such. So there's no way to get into this door from an elevated uh, walkway. Put it in biscuit to the side, or use an arrow and do it like a balcony out there. Uh, so lots of ways uh, you can use the spacer to customize your wall. Also, if you don't have uh, a solid, a full spacer, or you don't want the biscuit holes in it, you can use a pair. The half spacers, which do not have the biscuit slots on them, pop them in there like that, and then dress your wall like that. So either way, it's going to make the wall look grand. And that's generally why you're going to be doing uh, double high building. Either you want to do quickly build some sort of large, tall structures, right? You can quickly build a big double high gatehouse wall, uh, or you want a room that feels grand, right? Everything feels bigger when the uh, walls are twice as large, good for a grand library, a great hall, uh, a big ballroom, a castle, a uh, big see chamber in the castle, Mike. Or if you want to do some sort of uh, interior elevation, uh, such as mezzanines, 
uh, which we'll take a look at in a minute. So you could, could do something like this. So here we have taken, uh, this is just regular double high, right? Three double high posts, pair of double high walls. Over here, this is something. We've taken uh, two regular high corner posts, uh, two regular height walls, and then in this third one, we put in a double high corner post. Then on that, we'll take a two by four floor uh, with a pair of regular height posts and regular height wall. Pop that on top, rest it there. And then we'll take our half spacer and that fills that little space that's left between the two by four floor uh, and the double high post. And then from there, we can slot in any of our regular seated builder walls uh, and we get a really nice little raised mezzanine area. And you can run that around multiple areas. You can do the same trick multiple times in a row. Uh, and if you wanna cap it off, you can use some uh, railings. If you pop some railings on there, Pop the there's in there, and now you have a nice little raised area. And you can do a couple of different ones of these. It makes for really interesting combat if you're doing the inside of a warehouse or a big grand uh, tavern or a, a large uh, library or something where you can have people up on uh, multiple levels for dynamic multi level combat. So, those are the basics of building double high. Let's see how these apply to a few actual builds. So this is an example of those double high building techniques in an interior build. So this is a 12 by 12 build, and it's a uh, it's just kind of a combination of a, a tavern and a library. So you can get a, an ale and a uh, an ancient tome and study it while you uh, sip your ale. One of the first things you'll notice is that we're using a single high, a uh, large diagonal here. Uh, one of the challenges with double high building can be it can be harder for your players to see inside and see the minis, uh, particularly if they're further back from the table. Uh, so you can you can mix in some uh, regular high walls towards them, and potentially you can pull out uh, some of the double high walls uh, if they need to sort of see in more easily. So some of the techniques we have going here. Uh, over here, we're using a full size spacer to not only get a, um, it's got a biscuit filler there, the shield on there, but also it lets us put a window wall on the first floor and then a magnetic wall on the second floor so we can have this magnetic inside. This is from our original City Builder magnetic walls and accessories pack. So we have that magnetic sign on there and a window all in one place. So let's just customize that wall. Uh, similar all the way in the back of the uh, building here, we're doing the same trick. We have a solid wall on the bottom with a fireplace against it, spacer, and then the LED lantern wall above. So we can swap those out. We could put a high window up here if we want it, or another magnetic wall and put some decor over the fireplace or whatnot. Uh, over here, we're using the solid, the double high walls in just sort of standard configuration, walls and posts. Uh, in this case, we're taking making great use of the magnetic wall, so it's got a inside on the outside and a uh, painting on the inside. And over here, same thing, magnetic, icing the magnetic wall to hold the mantel shelf uh, behind the bar. Get some more shelving behind the bar. Uh, and this, the last one, also uh, holding up a uh, magnetic picture. So makes this whole wall feel very grand, extra high, and it's uh, dressed upright. There's magnetic accessories on just about every wall final technique we have going over here is this is a big four inch deep mezzanine right so there's a big area up here and the sides are cleverly using the floor tool so it's using the floral the, the four inch side here and then it curves in to the two inch side here so this is just the same as if you had a two by four floor coming in here we're just filling that space using the half spacer to fill the uh, space because this this terminates in a two inch end just like the two by four floor so same technique as we showed in the mezzanines uh, but with this curved floor so it makes kind of a neat 
curved, stylized upper mezzanine area. And this gives you a pretty good idea of, of the fun of having a couple of different levels, very accessible for combat, right? You could run an interesting multi-level combat in here. Uh, if you had uh, if you had folks running underneath here, right? So there's great cover underneath here. You could uh, you could just lift this whole kit and come a little up and out. This all biscuited together. Uh, if you wanted, you could run. You could, you could have the second story up here, a lot of first floors here, so you could be running minis in here and there at the same time. But hopefully this will give you an idea of how you could build an interesting, dynamic, grand uh, style room using our double high walls. Now let's look at an exterior. This is an example of using the double high building techniques for an exterior build. So this is a little outpost or keep, uh, or maybe it's like a gatehouse in front of your town something of the sort. Uh, in the front, we're using just standard double high building, right? It's a uh, double high, double door wall with a double high post, and we're using the uh, corbel row facade in there to hold it all together, feed it up into these uh, battlements really nicely, these crenellations. Uh, this wall, we're using the spacer here uh, to let us customize it. So the bottom is a standard high field stone LED wall with a torch from the Dungeon of Doom. And then there's a spacer, full-size spacer, and then above we have a balcony from the original uh, city builder. Uh, so we have a nice uh, little spot for a balcony there in the second story. Over here, we have a uh, we have the same thing. We're doing a LED wall on the bottom, uh, then the spacer, and then an uh, arrow slit wall above it. Uh, this one's tied together with these uh, the corporal row facade on the top also. Uh, and then on the spacer, we're using the uh, gargoyle uh, biscuit hole fillers to pop in there. Spacer can get a little uh, bit of style. On the side, uh, once again, using a full spacer to customize the wall, we have solid wall on the bottom. Then we're putting the spacer on the top so that we can have this wall line up with the uh, half arch here. So we've got the lion portcullis arch right here, uh, and it lines up really cleanly with the, uh, the half arch uh, because we put the spacer uh, above it. If we wanted to, we could put the spacer below it and then use another one of these, uh, we could use one of these cobblestone ramps to get us up one higher. Uh, it's nice to have the height options and this lines up real clean. This is where they could load the supplies in or some such. Uh, on the back side of the building, we're using regular double high wall. These are open and then we're using uh, field stone two by four uh, floors where the walls uh, just popped right against it. So there are also some fun little building opportunities you could do there. Uh, and you can very easily integrate regular high uh, walls to double stack any sort of regular high structures uh, to match with the double high structures. So hopefully this will give you an idea of some of the ways you can build the double high techniques and make cool exterior builds. And that's everything you need to know about double high building. For more information, check out all the links in the description below. And remember, our pledge manager opens May 2nd, and we are accepting late pledges. Thank you so much for watching, and now, it's back to the anvil.